squeeze, eh? Right, it's like an underwater cave system. I can have some fun in here. According to my calculations, much of this aquifer is 2,000 feet thick. Wow! Well, I'll be, would you look at that? Oh, my. What, you must be wondering, would bring such an unlikely five sum together? Ah, but in order for you to understand, we must go backwards. Back about a week. When it all began, my compadre and I were on a hunt. Our journey had brought us to Florida to pick up where Ponce de Leon left us centuries ago in search of the fountain of youth. We had traveled for days from St. Augustine to Orlando, from Naples to the Panhandle, where, upon following the direction of a wary old cracker, we found ourselves in Central Florida. Hmm. Excuse me, but my colleague and I are looking for the Fountain of Youth. Shall we continue on the straight path? Right. That appears to be a dead end. Perhaps you meant your right instead of mine. Right. Okay, so that would be left. Right. Our left, your right. Right? Right. That can't be right. Their right, our left, leads us right into the lake. Right. Oh, good heavens. Oh, don't mind them. They've always got to be right. Now you looking for the fountain of youth, you say? Why? Because it's there. Because perhaps if we discover this remarkable source, we can gain insight into the mysteries of life and even death. Well, we'll just be getting along. Wait, can you help us? Yep, you're looking at it. What? This piddly little lake? The water doesn't even cover the bank. Huh? Hey, whoa! She's a bright little dragonfly. One of few words, but a bright nonetheless. Oh my. What may seem to be, as you put it, a piddly lake is open to interpretation. Now, in Florida, our lake levels fluctuate. That means they go up and down, in case I'm speaking over your heads. The dragonfly was indeed smart. She told us, well, via the frog's translation, that many things impact Florida's water levels, with the numero uno factor being rainfall. Oh, that's significant. Let me just import that into my databank and see what comes up. Oh, this is most interesting. It appears that water levels can be influenced by seasonal rainfall. And in fact, two thirds of the yearly rain falls between June and September. Oh my. Additionally, it appears Florida lakes can be impacted by extreme conditions as well. For example, extreme wet or dry years can produce fluctuations up to five feet in lake levels. Right. And then there's the theory of evapotranspiration. What is this evapotranspiration? Um, it's like this. Moisture from the oceans, rivers, lakes, soil, and even plants evaporate into the atmosphere. Um, like a tree draws moisture up through its roots, sends it out to its branches and leaves where it transpires. Uh, turns to vapor and evaporates into the air. Oh yes, condensing to form clouds. And then... Where's she off to? She says follow her. She'll show us where it goes. Up we go. <clears throat> you can leap. He can fly. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? This is Florida, a land of endless attractions and shameless opportunists. According to my research, in Florida, the average total use of water for all purposes amounts to around 8 billion gallons a day. Now, an average of 107 billion gallons of water per day is lost through evapotranspiration. Sounds like a lot. My mind can't fathom. She says to picture this. 
107 billion gallons of water is the same as filling 2.1 billion bathtubs a day. Hmm. That equals over 128 baths a day for every person in Florida. Wait, uh, this is water lost, evaporated, uh, subtracted from our water resources. 107 billion gallons per day of water going out of Florida. It's not lost. We know where it goes. It evaporates to form clouds. Now, can we get back on track in our search? I thought you said she was a fly of few words. Just let her do it her way. All right, all right, I'll tell them. The average rainfall in Florida is 54 inches a year, compared to the national average by state of 27 inches a year. Hmm. By my calculations, that converts to an average 150 billion gallons of water coming into Florida per day. Which translates into a thousand bazillion baths a day, blah, blah, blah. I decided that the wrath of the fly and a sudden thunderstorm was not something to be messed with. We regained our footing as we landed on solid ground where there had obviously been quite a drenching. We pitched camp for the night and awoke, ready to continue our journey. I know we're close. If we can just stay focused, I swear I can almost taste the fountain right now. No, that's just swamp water. You idiotic otter! Oh dear! Uh, my computer! All my data! Here you are, my old friend. Oh, <laughs> thank you. On top of rainfall, northern rivers bring an additional average flow of 25 billion gallons of water into the state per day. Dada, schmada, I want action, not fractions, for a bunch of amateur explorers. Explorers? Ooh, how exotic. What are you looking for? Caves? Gold? Citrus? No, I'm attempting to look for the fountain of youth. Oh, hum, been there, done that. What do you mean? You know where the Fountain of Youth is? <laughs> Bob's away! Quick, follow that otter! Not so fast, Christopher Columbus. This river empties into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm clearly, and I mean clearly, not too fond of salt water. I am confident that the Gulf of Mexico is not the fountain of youth. So following the otter will lead us nowhere. All this water, where does it come from? Run off. I know. She's definitely one to run off at the mouth. No, she's talking about run off. After it rains, what's not absorbed into the soil travels on top of the ground, replenishing lakes and, as we're witnessing here, rivers. Oh my, a surface runoff totals over an estimated 40 billion gallons of water a day. Which equals about a mega trillion Google bath. Actually, it's the equivalent to around 800 million car washes. Well, 40 billion plus gallons of runoff is a lot of water. Seems like a waste. No, to the contrary. Apparently, the runoff serves an important function in helping to maintain the health of rivers and estuaries on its way to the ocean and gulf. But what happens to the water that doesn't run off? Oh, that extra 20 billion gallons? It percolates into the ground and soaks into the aquifer. Hey, hold up! Explain. You've got issues, don't you? It's easy. The water soaks into the ground and into the Floridan aquifer. Yes, into the Floridan aquifer, an underground limestone formation which lies under the entire state of Florida and portions of Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. The Floridan aquifer underlies about 100,000 square miles. 
and is one of the most productive aquifers in the world. It's estimated to contain more than one quadrillion gallons of fresh water. It's in constant motion, moving 20 billion gallons of water underground to the ocean or the gulf daily. Do you think this is it? Is this Floridan aquifer the fountain of youth? How do we get there? I know I'm just an idiotic otter, but we can enter through the spring. Uh, we'd have to dive too deep. It's too dangerous to try to swim. How about a submarine? Well, uh, remember, it's Florida. And that's what led us here, inside the Floridan aquifer. Although it was an amazing journey, I couldn't help but be a little disappointed. Is anything wrong, old chap? I'm still baffled by the Fountain of Youth. I believe we were so close. I'll bet she's glad I proved to be such a fool. Nope, to the contrary. She wants you to retract your journey. Think she might be missing something. Well, let's see. We figured out that for many reasons, moisture evaporates at varying rates from the land and the sea. We followed the theory of evapotranspiration and ended up above the clouds. Then after it rains, streams, rivers and estuaries carry the runoff to the gulf or ocean. Excess rainwater percolates underground and soaks into the Floridan aquifer where it discharges from springs or moves underground to the ocean or gulf. And it starts all over evaporating again from the sea and the land. <sighs> I've come full circle, all the way back to my starting point. She says, and I quote, exactly. Uh, you come full circle only to- Only to begin the cycle again. Yes, that's it. We just precisely followed the hydrologic cycle. Well, that's wonderful. Good for us. But we were looking for the Fountain of Youth, not the Hydrologic Cycle. Lighten up already. Now, the Fountain of Youth, Hydrologic Cycle. Rainfall, runoff, lakes, rivers, springs, aquifers. And what do they all have in common? Water. So? H2O! Above us, below us, all around us, in constant motion. So you're saying that the Fountain of Youth is right here? Metaphorically speaking, it's water. <laughs> and the light went on. I really got it. Water. Who? What can live without it? No one and nothing. It's like a balance sheet, a budget, if you will. If rainfall and rivers flowing into Florida equals 175 billion gallons of water a day coming in, and evapotranspiration, runoff, groundwater discharge, and water usage equals 175 billion gallons going out, then the total amount of water is constant. Water usage is a diversion. No matter how it's used, it ends up going back into the cycle. And the author is right. It is in constant motion. Above us, below us, and all around us, the life force lies within the hydrologic cycle, and therein lies the fountain of youth. Another journey on the books. So, where shall we head to next? Oh, Nelly, not so fast. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Please, can we pull the plug on the bathing references? Not bad. You've discovered the underlying water mystery. Now you have to piece the puzzle together on how to take care of what you found. Boot me up, Bobby. Shall I prepare a PowerPoint? I'm considering the Bermuda Triangle, but first, the search for Atlantis. Been there, done that. 